Hello and welcome to the first part of this three part series on how to set up a VPS for your site projects and applications. At the end of the series, you will have a, your own server and you will be able to host your own applications to the web connected to a domain with SSL certificates so that you can access them through HTTPS. In the first part of the series, we will set up a VPS and for that we will use Hostinger as our server provider. If you want, there is a link in the description to Hostinger, but you can choose whatever hosting provider you want as long as they offer VPS with full root access. So let's get started. This is Hostinger and we are in the VPS sections and as you can see, they offer a lot of different VPS options, but for this video, we will choose VPS2 with two gigabytes of RAM and 40 gigabytes of SSD disk space. And as previously mentioned, the full root access that we need. So we add this to the card, select the plan that we want. So one month, 12 months, etc. Um, we will use the 12 months because it seems pretty appropriate. Fill on our uh, payment details or create an account or login. And yeah, then see you when I purchase my server. After the payment is done, we come to the H panel of Hostinger where we can start the setup process for the VPS. So let's do that. Click on start now, and now we choose the location for our server. Because I'm in Germany, Netherlands is a good location for me, but choose whatever is best for you. Then we click continue and choose the plain OS option because we don't need a control, control panel. We will do everything from the command line. And yes, that may sound a bit daunting, but it's worth it and you will learn a lot if you don't know it already. So we choose Ubuntu, one of the most common Linux distributions out there. Okay, and the last step is to choose a host name and the root password. The host name, we will just use something like example.com. It's necessary to identify the server in the H panel console and it's the host name set on the VPS. Next up, set a secure root password with that we can later log into the server. And lastly, here is the add SSH key option. We will skip that for now because we will do it manually later. So everyone also not following hosting our steps can do it. Then we click on save and continue. Check that everything we entered is correct. So server, operating system, hosting, root password, and then click on finish setup. After the setup is finished, you will come back to the H panel and here you can manage your VPS. So let's click on manage. And here in the top, we see already how we can connect to the server. For that, we can use a simple terminal or an SSH manager like putty but in this case we will use the basic terminal of windows in this case so we copy the command and enter it now we accept the fingerprint and we can log in with our password that we set in the last step now we are logged in that's already the first step done. Next up, we create a new user for our server using the add user utility provided by Ubuntu. Therefore, we just write add user, enter the username. So in this case, I want a user called Max. Here we can see it creates the user, creates the home directory, and now we have to enter a password as a that is at least 12 characters long.
After that, we can provide some more information. I will not do this now, but yeah. So now we have to give our new user some admin rights. And for that, we will run user mod minus ag, ag sudo max. With that, our new user has sudo rights and we can exit the server. Next up, we want to easily enter the new server. If you see, if I run now SSH max, because that's the name of the new user and the IP of our server, we have to enter the password as we specified before. And yeah, that's okay. But after some time, it can get really annoying. So let's make this a little easier. To make this a little bit easier, we will create a new SSH key pair and then copy the public key onto our server. So let's get started. For that, we will use the SSH key gen command, press enter. Then you can see, okay, it's generating the key pair. Where do we want to store it? We'll use the ID RSR key, that's the default location, and that will be used by default by the SSH command. So enter, enter a passphrase, I will leave it empty. And then we can see identification and public key have been generated. The next step is then to copy this onto our server. For that, we will run SSH copy ID minus I, then the path to the, to the file that is C slash users slash max slash SSH slash ID RSR dot pub. In your case, it will be a different user. And then we want to copy it on the server. So we run this and we have to enter the password one more time. Now it is um, added to the server and we can simply log into it by running ssh max at the IP and we will not be prompted a password anymore. With that, you can simply log into your server and you're um, ready for the next steps, hosting our application and then connecting it with a domain. So thank you for watching till now and see you in the next part.